Growing Together, a curious name for a new podcast, when over the past few years it feels more like we've grown apart. The pandemic upheaval, social and economic unrest have left many disconnected more now than ever. So why would m and want to launch a new webinar and podcast to talk about growing together? Well, the answer is simple. We are called to advance God's kingdom, and the only way that is going to happen is if we work this together. None of us are in this work alone, no matter where we are and in what capacity we serve. We are to be on mission, and the focus of that mission for us is North America. If we are to move forward, we must grow together, and growing together is about collaboration and vitality. And that's what we're here to talk about. Hello, and welcome to Growing Together, a podcast where we discuss all things related to church planting and vitality in the Presbyterian Church in America. I'm Chris Vogel, the Church Planting and Vitality Coordinator for Mission to North America. This podcast exists to cultivate kingdom advancement in the PCA by connecting leaders, increasing awareness of the work being done, and promoting growth through discussions on church planting and vitality. Join us today as we grow together. We're kicking off our time today with Dr. Erwin Entz, the coordinator of Mission to North America, Dr. Murray Lee, the executive coordinator, and me, I'm Chris Vogel, the church planting and vitality coordinator. On this inaugural webinar, we are setting the table for future webinars and podcasts that you'll hear about. Well, today, we'll be discussing the task the denomination has set before m and and how that is expressed today. And then we'll talk about the growth of m and through the, uh, the various ministries that have developed as a response to needs in our local congregations. And then we'll examine how we engage the challenges before us. Just a note, we uh, you'll hear this at the end of the program, but we want to invite you to join us who are praying for our upcoming General Assembly. We're looking uh, for 1,000 ruling and teaching elders to pray for church planting and vitality leading up to our assembly. More info on that will be in the show notes uh, that you'll receive after our time together. And after our 30 minutes uh, this uh, today, we'll be answering questions that you may have. The upper right-hand corner of your screen is a chat box. Open that up and drop in any questions or comments you have, and we'll deal with that in the second part of our program. Well, Erwin, let's start with you. Mission to North America, bring us up to speed as why we exist and how we see fulfilling that commission today. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Good to be with you and Murray and grateful for your webinar and podcast radio voice uh, to be <laughs> leading us. Uh, Mission to North America. What is Mission to North America? There's a formal answer here that uh, that comes from our uh, rules of assembly operation in the book of church order. Um, so I'll, I'll quote that rules of assembly operation. Uh, paragraph two of the sixth chapter says that the affairs of the church involved in its extension in the United States and Canada are assigned to the committee on mission to North America. The affairs of the church involved in this extension in the United States and Canada are assigned to uh, to M and A. Well, what does that what does that mean? That that really means that what uh, our founding fathers and framers of the PCA uh, intended when they created this uh, committee was that it would help um, engage and promote the outward facing missional face of uh, of the PCA. That this is about our outward face of our churches in the United States and Canada. Really what we're talking about is engaging the denomination for the advancement of the kingdom in North America. And so uh, another way to state who we are and why we exist is that m a exists to cultivate the advancement of the kingdom through the PCA in North America. And we serve we serve as a primary resource for church vitality, that is church health, 
uh, in our, our denomination and for church planting. Those two, and this is a frame, uh, 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 a, a phrase I got from from Murray, who you hear from soon. But those two are are the the, the two prong tips of the spear uh, for kingdom mission for our denomination, um, church vitality and church planting. And, and there's a there's a passage of scripture that is really a blessing to, to me as I think about this. And this is uh, the end of the 12th chapter of Hebrews where the writer says in verses 28 to 29, therefore, let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken and let us offer to God acceptable worship with reverence and awe for our God is a consuming fire. And this reality that we, even as we seek to cultivate the advancement of the kingdom are those who have received a kingdom who cannot be but that cannot be shaken. That actually frees us to pursue kingdom mission as a church without fear in every region and every community, among every people group. And this pursuit will take the entire denomination striving together. And so MNA, last thing I'll say, is a, a primary resource for, for promoting a robust vision for the ways that God would have our church be on kingdom mission in the current age. That's great. But thank you, uh, uh, Murray. Uh, even as we've heard that, recognizing, as always, we stand on the shoulders of those who have gone before us. As we in the PCA are about to celebrate 50 years, we've inherited a magnificent legacy. And, and we also, I think, recognize we've grown beyond what our founding fathers ever imagined where we would be now. There are a lot of facets to M&A, various ministries serving many needs. Would you help us uh, categorize uh, uh, them for us and give us an overview of, of why they exist and what they do? Yeah, absolutely. I should start by saying that m and ministries are one of the greatest services to the local church. And as we look back over the 50 years of our denomination's history, our ministries have arisen to meet real felt needs in the local church. That means that those whose shoulders we now stand didn't just dream up the ministries. No, those ministries arose to meet real practical needs for ministry engagement and ministry practitioners in the local church, local presbyteries. So we just if we just think about the M&A ministry just in very broad categories without naming each one of them, we would say that they exist in church planting ministries, ethnic minority ministries, and diaconal service ministries that are geared towards church planting and church vitality. And we could spend really the entire time today talking about their value and service to the church. And I believe, as I understand it, we will highlight the work that the Lord has and is doing through those ministries in upcoming episodes. Um, but, you know, as, as far as why they exist, that's, that's easy. Practically speaking, we support presbyteries and churches in their efforts to plant more churches. We strengthen existing churches to help leaders increase their re re reach and effectiveness locally. And we help churches start new ministries efficiently and increase the effectiveness of existing ministries all by the grace of God. And so as we, as we stand here looking towards the next 50 years, what we're hoping to do is to strategically expand M&A ministry engagement across our denomination. That means the development and deployment of our ministries to come alongside the local church and presbytery to provide expertise with excellence in this two-pronged sphere uh, like a tip of the spear that Erwin mentioned, approach of church planting and church vitality. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. So, so let me uh, let me throw the ball your way here, Chris. Uh, in your role as church planting and vitality coordinator, how do you um, see M and A's calling to oversee the PCA's extension in the U.S. and Canada? What does that look like? Um, in light of who m a is and called to be and our current cultural context. Yeah, no, it's, I think it's important to always recognize that we live, uh, and we always have, but we can see especially now, we live in a time of great need and wonderful opportunity. 
all the research points to our culture's movement to a greater isolation, to our hyper independence that is shattering community. People feel alienated, alone. Now, this was not caused by COVID, but in the past three years, it, it, the trend has certainly sped up. A book I read recently, Norena Hertz's book, uh, The Lonely Century, she highlights the movement away from sociability to interiority and the damage this does to a, a culture. Well, we have to recognize that we, the church, are uniquely situated by God's grace to offer what our world longs for but does not know where to find it. An answer is to strengthen our churches and to plant more churches. But the challenge is where to find those pastors and planters. And the truth is, many of us sense the isolation all around us that others feel as well. And this is why you're going to be hearing about planting and vitality. The two go together. Where are we as M&A? Well, you'll hear, hear us talk about one M&A, because if we are to see kingdom advancement in North America, we must work together to bring health to existing churches. The ministries of M&A can bring an outward face to any church, helping establish greater cohesion in the body and avenues for connection in one's community. Vitality speaks of the need for endurance and strength through the task before us. You see, being obedient to the Great Commission is made easier when churches partner together. M&A and her ministries are here to provide practical resources to serve our churches and our presbyteries. When churches are enlivened, energized, out of that, we can plant churches. It's not an either or, it's a both and. We believe healthy churches, healthy presbyteries, will plant more healthy churches. Now, what is more, one M&A offers help for churches and presbyteries to see the fields that are ready for harvest. The world now is, is coming to our communities. And so we have these ethnic minority ministries that can help develop the means to plant churches that will begin to reflect the world in which we live. There are ministries to strengthen your church to reach those who are often overlooked in our own communities. And so I would always say, if, if you're a pastor, an elder, a member of a PCA church, I'd ask you to take a look at what M&A has to offer. You know your community and your church. And so then who in M&A can you invite to come alongside, to partner with you, to reach your neighborhood? Because really, you got to remember, we're not alone. You're not alone. M&A is here to support, train, assist, equip you to serve your community for kingdom advancement. Well, I think with all of that, it'd be great to hear even some stories from the three of us, how, how we have seen that as, as we've moved around in various churches and presbyteries here. Uh, share a, a story that you've seen the effect uh, that M&A has had uh, and, and how those churches, presbyteries have seen that engagement with M&A. Erwin? Yeah, so I will, uh, I'll start with one that's actually personal. Uh, I wasn't always uh, the coordinator of Mission to North America. Uh, I was a, uh, a planter and, uh, and pastor uh, prior to that in the church that uh, we were a part of planting in uh, Columbia, Columbia, Maryland, City of Hope Presbyterian Church. Uh, a few years into that, that plant, we we were really uh, taking some time to pray. I had gone through a sermon series on uh, on renewal uh, for for the church that we're always in a cycle of renewal and uh, hearing the voice of the spirit of the Lord through the Spirit to you know as if we were one of the seven churches in um, the letters to letter to uh, in, in Revelation and uh, say well if if the Lord were speaking to our church what would he commend us for in our ministry life. And we're going to give him praise for that. And what would he say, but this I have against you and, and rebuke us for and turn, call us to repent of. And we did this exercise actually as a whole church in our community groups. And the one, one of the things that we said was we really are not being effective in reaching our neighbors right around us as a church plant. We were worshiping in a community center in what's called a village center in one of the 10 villages in, uh, in Colombia. And we, we really wanted to see the Lord move through our ministry work to engage those, uh, those neighbors. And, uh, we prayed about it and, you know, 
it's <laughs> the, the next uh, the next day, um, I get an email about uh, M and A's ESL ministry, <laughs> you know, and um, and and talk to uh, a couple in our church that had just joined. He uh, had come from doing mission work overseas and was wanted to help lead some local mission. And we talked about well. Should we get our people trained for uh, an ESL ministry here uh, at City of Hope? And there was a great deal of excitement around that. And we began to, and again, we're not a large church. We're not a large church. But we began to get trained, went through the ESL training and launched a ministry um, right there. We, we flipped our Wednesday night uh, Bible study to... Um, in ESL outreach, planted out flyers in the neighborhood, in the village uh, businesses and the, the apartments in the, around the village center. And um, and that w- turned out to be such a blessing because we got neighbors we didn't had never seen um, cut f- uh, from multiple generations to come to our Wednesday night ESL class, learn that there were over there are over 30 different languages spoken right in the community around us. And, um, and the, the beauty about uh, ESL is that it, it does ESL from a gospel perspective, right? And so, so you're actually also translating scripture. So you're always uh, engage, teaching English through the scriptures. You're, you're engaging God's word and, and praying together and learning to fellowship with these people. And so... Uh, it turned out, to, you know, way before I was a, a, a coordinator of Mission to North America, we uh, we were enabled through uh, one of MNA's ministries to be a blessing right there in in reaching uh, reaching our neighbors uh, in loving service. That's, that's great. Yeah, that hearing that that uh, example from from your own ministry that is now wedded into very much to what, what you're doing. Murray, what, what about you? What have, what have you seen either from your past or, or at present? Well, I'll give two stories, one from the past and one from one from the present and sort of start with where Erwin started from. There was a time when I wasn't serving the current capacity that I was. And our church is a church plant that I planted and a team of us planted 15 years ago. And we really desired about four years into the church plant, we really desired to pass on some of the mistakes that we had made as as a, as a church plant to others so that others might learn from our mistakes and maybe we could facilitate the the um, the planting of more churches. And so we called up the folks that were in charge of church planting at M&A, and uh, they came down and met us in Birmingham and came up with a strategy to develop a church planting cohort and continue to this day. So our the church that I was a part of uh, starting is now in its 11th year, thanks to the, the uh, men and women at Cahaba Park and the leadership that we've gotten from M&A of training church planters from all across the denomination. So I just have to say, were it not for the expertise from the folks at uh, M&A in the church planning department, we, we wouldn't have gotten it off the ground. The second thing that I that I would want to pick up on, Erwin said, you know, we're, we're not a large church. And I, I think he meant locally, but in, but as I, in my travels, we're not a large church globally, uh, the PCA that is. But what I've been so astounded by is the remarkable influence that God has allowed the PCA to have on the kingdom of God. And with that remarkable influence, despite our size, that means we have a tremendous responsibility to steward that, to steward that well. So I've just been so incredibly amazed by the, by the amount of um, kingdom influence that God has given a relatively small group of brothers and sisters, but it's beautiful. That's great. That's great. Yeah, I, I, for, for me, yeah, looking both back and uh, more in the past and in the present, just the, the engagement with M and A. Uh, when, when I arrived up here in Wisconsin in 1987, um, we had one church in the state, and that was way up north in the North Woods, uh, hours north of where I was in Milwaukee. 
And so very quickly within the first two weeks we were here, we were part of a church plant. And then from 87 to 95, we went from one to six churches and it was great. And then everything slowed down here in Wisconsin, not just for the winter, as it often does, but for, for a, a very long winter. Uh, it was winter and it wasn't Christmas. We tried planting from 95 to, to 2010 without much success. m and was helpful, but we couldn't get traction. And then by God's grace, things started to pick up in 2010. And so began to see that, that excitement and that movement of the Spirit of uh, of the Lord. So from 2010 to, 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 to 20 till now, 2023, we've gone from six to, to 20 churches in, and seen that growth. But a lot of that growth then uh, has come about as we were able to engage with m and in, in various ways. I, one of the ways in particular, a number of years ago, there was something called the Antioch Fund. I, I think a number of those listening have received and we got a grant from them. And it allowed us to, to really move forward. So that started around 2016, 17. We started the On Wisconsin Network, uh, which is basically was our, our M&A committee. And so began training local leaders, uh, raising up uh, people here. And M&A was certainly a part of that. And it's, it's why from 87 until till now, I've, I've always been in the kind of the 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 circle, the m a circle in various ways, even though I planted and pastored a church for 26 years, out of that church, we, we were able to, we were privileged to help start some others and, uh, and see that, that whole process continue on. So yeah, couldn't have done it. Um, and having for me as a pastor up here in Wisconsin, um, being somewhat disconnected, especially in the eighties and nineties, uh, more disconnected from the the, the, the rootedness of, of the PCA, which more so then was, was in the South. It, it being, uh, engaging with m allowed me to see I'm part of something larger, I, that I wasn't alone. Um, I could gather together with other planters and people who have planted or interested in it, wanting to talk about church vitality. Uh, it, it made a huge, huge difference. And then since then, the last couple years, and at the time I've been working with m the last couple of years as a consultant, now in my present role, one thing I'm really encouraged about is what I see as an outward-facing kingdom-mindedness as I travel around. Uh, there is a desire for collaborative work, for what I would call cross-pollination among presbyteries and networks. Uh, a critical component in my work is to help make those connections with the uh, various ministries to, to introduce uh, churches and presbyteries of the, of the myriad of opportunities that are right here in, in our own midst. Just last month, I had to, I was honored to participate in, uh, with uh, City Lights. It's, this is a, a Chinese uh, movement uh, where about a dozen Mandarin-speaking pastors who are looking to to bond to, uh, to bond together and reach first-generation uh, Mandarin-speaking immigrants, those, those from China. And from there, I went up to Philadelphia, met with a, a number of pastors from five different pa uh, presbyteries around the Philadelphia area as they seek to rebuild a network to reach that city. And then I was back in Atlanta area for uh, the Korean Ministries uh, EM Forum that Billy Park was doing, the English Ministries Forum. And then the next day, I was in Central Georgia Presbytery talking about pastoral well-being. The, the diversity uh, in that that I saw was so encouraging. Uh, hearing from older established churches wanting to, to talk about how to be healthy and to move forward, to, to see new movements starting, resurrecting others that, that had a time but have, in the midst of COVID have, have faltered. So in a lot of ways, uh, this is where I just see and am encouraged uh, by the fact that I say to churches, if, if your church or your m and Presbytery m and committee feels stalled, and wonders what steps you could take in your region, in your church, reach out to us. Uh, we, we, we would love to talk. And there are so many options and opportunities. There's just not a few of us here doing it. There's a, there's a huge team uh, and a, a various diverse ministries that can work in, in any, any place at where, we're, where we're at. But we're... Uh, any other thoughts between you two guys? Uh, otherwise, we can move to the audience audience participation part of our of our time as as we work through our segment. Yeah, let me. I just want to reiterate that last point, Chris. 
uh, because it is well with I've experienced the same dynamic and Mary can say similarly. I mean, in my time as coordinator over these 18 months, I've been privileged to travel all over uh, this country. I will be getting to Canada uh, later on this this year. We forget about our, our brethren and sister uh, up north of the um, of the border. But but the the robust heart and desire for missional engagement, for ongoing faithfulness to Christ in the current age um, is alive and well in the PCA. And that excites us all as we are enjoined in this work for that purpose. And so, so one of the primary things Mission to North America, America is enabled to do and strives to do is that collaborative work to reiterate what Chris said at the very beginning to let our churches and presbyters know, like you don't have to figure this out all on your own, <laughs> right? We are, we are actually here for you. And, and in our role as a denominational agency, we want to make those connections for you so that uh, you can grow in kingdom missional health in your, in your local context. So just wanted to kind of add that, to what you were sharing, uh, Chris and Murray. Thank you for uh, joining us today on Growing Together. You'll be receiving a follow-up email, contact info, links for more information. I hear it in about a week. We'll, you'll get that. But as always, reach out to us. We exist to serve you as we are growing together. Good day. Thanks for tuning into this episode of Growing Together. We hope you found the discussion informative and engaging. If you want to stay up to date on all things related to church planting and vitality in the PCA, be sure to subscribe to the podcast. We'd also love to hear your thoughts, so please leave us a rating and review. Help us spread the word by recommending the podcast to other brothers and sisters in the PCA. To stay in the loop and receive updates, visit pcamna.org slash growing dash together and join our email list. And don't forget to follow us at Mission to North America on Facebook, at PCAMNA on Twitter, and at MNA PCA on Instagram for even more content. Thanks for being a part of the Growing Together community. We'll see you in the next episode.